Hello, today I'm going to show you probably the coolest reef alkalinity monitor in the world. <laughs> uh, this really, really cool project called the Aquamon by Wally B. Hello and welcome back everyone to Amra Azul TV. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, today I'm shooting from the man cave of Wally B. Let me backtrack about five years ago. I just had purchased a secondhand reef tank. It was a small little like 30 gallon thing with a crummy canister filter and it was full of algae. And I went to my local fish store try, to try to like figure out what to do and you know standing in front of a wall of products. I was uh, really intimidated and I didn't know what to do and uh, this gentleman who was around he uh, kind of uh, introduced himself uh, it turns out that he's a neighbor that lives uh, you know, a few minutes away and he gave me some really helpful tips about how to control green hair algae you know fast forward later uh, you know five years later uh, Wally and myself are uh, really good friends uh, he, he has this uh, awesome 120 gallon tank in his uh, man cave and uh, 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 this is what I'm shooting now. It's, uh, it's supposed to be an SPS reef. He's been having some issues with the sticks, but you know we're working on it together. Uh, it's a really awesome system. Uh, he is an engineer. Uh, this is actually a frag tank that's uh, plugged downstream of his uh, system. He's made his own automatic water change system. He buys these KMOR dosers and he's able to kind of program them to do whatever he wants. Uh, he also has uh, uh, his own little dosing machine for uh, uh, two parts and, and uh, other additives. Uh, again, all designed uh, by himself. So he just buys the dosing heads uh, off of Amazon and he uses uh, uh, Adreno and, uh, and like a, uh, something related to Raspberry Pi and he's able to kind of program them. This is the aquarium. Uh, uh, this is the sump for his aquarium. And, uh, you know, if you walk in his fish room, everything is like uh, super organized, uh, lots of controllers, uh, really, really fancy system. Uh, this is the back of his display. So uh, what a, a, a few, uh, I think, when was it? About, a, about maybe almost a year ago or last, last summer, last spring, I think. So it was almost about a year ago. Uh, when the Trident came out, I like jumped in and I got like the first or second Trident that was sold in Canada or something like that. And I was super excited. I'm like, hey, Wally, you should, you should like, you know, get one for your SPS system. And he's like, yeah, no, I think I'm going to make one. And, you know, any other person, if they were to tell you they're going to make an alkalinity monitor, you would like, no, you, you, you're on crack, right? Like <laughs> you can't make an alkalinity monitor. But Wally has made like uh, uh, really fancy systems before. He actually built my uh, automatic uh, automatic top off for my Evo. Uh, so when he said he was gonna make an alkalinity monitor, I'm like, okay, wow, this is this is gonna be cool. And he kept he kept the project a secret, and it was only like uh, uh, th this is uh, some of the SPS casualties that Wally has had. So some of these are mine. Like th this is definitely my Pac Man. Wally, you killed my Pac-Man. <laughs> anyway, so he kept the project secret from me for a really long time. And just last weekend or a couple of weekends ago, he invited me over. And here is the awesome system that he built, right? So you're looking essentially as, a, as an inkjet printer. <laughs> you're looking at an inkjet printer that Wally has hijacked. Uh, to uh, serve as his alkalinity monitor. It's called the Aquamon and it's supposed to, he's got three tanks and he built this essentially to test and monitor alkalinity in all three of his tanks. Uh, and so uh, if this looks familiar, uh, this little bit, you, you, I've got to get to that later. So it's fully kind of uh, on the back end of this. He's got like a whole bunch of different pumps to move water from these three different tanks. Uh, water, uh, a line for reagents and a line for wastewater and cleanup. Uh, you'll see why in a sec. 
uh, and uh, everything is kind of configured, uh, uh, configurable online. You could access this thing online. Uh, it does have like a touchscreen display. <laughs> this is just so cool. Cool. So uh, from the machine or from the software, and you could like do a whole bunch of things. Uh, it uh, records the data. It, you'll see in a second how that you could graph data, and everything is accessible from the monitor itself. Uh, as well as the back end. So online you could go in, access a website and, and get data. Uh, here are the graphs for like the, his three tanks and you could go one by one and you actually see the, the measurements of the alkalinity over time. Uh, just super cool system. So, so here, here it is running and, and you can just enjoy how awesome it is. So uh, the tester, which uh, if, if you guess, it, I mean, hopefully this, it will become apparent that he's essentially using a henna checker he so he not only uh, not only did he hijack an inkjet printer but he's also hijacking a henna checker to be actually uh, to essentially automate this so this is the henna checker inside of this casing that moves up and down this railway to receive water from the tank to receive the reagents it does the test and then there's a fun way to kind of uh, empty it out at the end so here we're, we're running a test on um, on just some sample water and so uh, you kind of initiate the test. Uh, we're testing tank one, you click a button, and then, and then, so the first step is uh, it gives you this cool graphic. Don't, don't put your hand in the Aquaman when it's uh, moving. You don't want anything chopped off or more likely the machine to be damaged. Uh, so the first stage is actually, it takes all the input line and it purges them. Uh, so uh, first, while he clears the lines by running the pump backwards and then he sucks in a fresh sample of water he waits for a few minutes for any bubbles in the lines to kind of uh, 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 move move to a specific spot in in the line and then he purges the line completely uh, so here are all the bubbles trapped and then he runs a burst cycle so there's actually a collection tube at the bottom here so now line one is all primed and ready, and uh, here goes the henna egg. Uh, gonna get positioned right underneath uh, tube number one, and we fill the tube up with our 10 mil, just like you would do for a regular uh, like a henna test. And then once the egg is filled, it's time uh, if you if you've ever used the henna. So actually, uh, you first fill up the tube, and then you run a blank. Uh, so the carousel is going to move in the side and he's actually going to cap, <laughs> he's going to cap the henna. This is just so cool. And so he, he's actually, what he's doing is he could like press buttons on the henna from the back end uh, because he like actually ran some wires into it. But to read the display, he actually is, he has a camera and he shines a light on the display window. And whenever anything appears on the henna display, he actually takes the image and through computer vision, he's able to digitize it and then know exactly where what the henna's uh, what the henna's internal state is. So he's imaging now. He sees that okay, C1 has been completed, and he's gonna wait until the C2, the second step in the henna protocol. Uh, that's when you would add the reagents. So uh, C1 is complete. Actually, no, it's not complete yet. He's gonna press C1 now. It's uh, the henna is measuring, uh, uh, shining a light inside the tube, uh, measuring the color density. And now we're ready for the reagent. So uh, you're going to see that the henna egg, now the cap is going to get removed. We're going to wait here. There we go. And then the next step would be the reagents. So I think the henna is going to go up and down the track just to kind of make sure the position is uh, uh, in, in the right in the right place so there it goes back to reagents now I think uh, yeah there we go we're aliquoting about a, a mil or a, a, I forgot how that exact amount but uh, it'd be the same amount if you were to do an alkalinity test on a hand on your own so now the reagent is in the tube and this it, for me is probably the coolest part of this whole machinery <laughs> he's got a robot arm to shake and 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 mix a sample <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so the henna egg goes all the way to the end, and uh, the, the, it just looks like the, the, the can-do arm, right? The, the arm that was on, uh, uh, on, the, 
uh, shuttle. <laughs> and so uh, this uh, the arm, this robotic arm kind of spins really fast and it creates a vortex that uh, mixes, uh, it mixes the reagent and, and the sample. Uh, this happens several times. And I, I'm doing a, a voice over the actual soundtrack, but uh, the, the sounds of this machine is super cute. It, like it's, it sounds like a, a bubble jet printer, right? It, it's got all of these like zips and and beeps and and uh, it, it's it's hilarious to watch. I mean, it's it's really fun. It's like uh, like I, I the whole time I was doing this, I, I felt I was in in like <laughs> in some kind of like evil engineer, not evil engineering genius, but in like an engineering genius is like clear with everything like peeping and squeaking. Uh, just really cool. So uh, I think it's uh, still mixing here. Yeah, I think the it's done mixing, so the robotic arm kind of de declines, and he obviously doesn't want to do it too quickly because he doesn't want to have any drips. And so he's gonna pause a few seconds there. The arm moves out of the way. This arm is gonna get cleaned later. You'll see. Uh, then we're ready for the test. So we go back, and the vial gets capped again. So we're gonna cap the vial, and we're essentially gonna press the button again, but he he does it automatically. Uh, press the button again on the henna so that way uh, it's reading the uh, color density inside the tube after the reagents has been added and then if you've run henna before typically you get the results in I forgot what unit this is this is not in DKH and then you have to manually convert this to DKH so what Wally's doing now is he's taking a picture of this digitizing it and then manually uh, and then automatically doing the conversion from whatever the units here to DKH and then the information is displayed on two different spots on the Aquamon uh, and uh, it's uploaded uh, to the cloud where data is essentially stored. And so here is the results after the test was run the alkalinity was uh, 9.74 and he actually like he, he defines targets so uh, if uh, if the alkalinity values were above or below the user defined targets then it would alert him and let him know that okay you have to uh, uh, you have to essentially up your dosing and because everything is essentially uh, online uh, so now uh, the machine is going through a self cleaning cycle so it kind of tips all the water into a reservoir and, and you'll see it kind of go and rinse itself several times I'm fast forwarding this uh, but essentially, because his pro he built his old he built his own dosing machines, uh, so he could totally tie in the values that he's getting from uh, the Aquaman uh, to the actual uh, 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 dosing that he does. So he he could fully automate his dosing based on on the testing that he does. So the machine is going through the self cleaning cycle now, and he's also like cleaning the arm. Uh, the way he does this is he essentially like rinses it with RODI water. I think about three times. Uh, and and lets it dry upside down. So uh, that's that's essentially the the machine in a nutshell. Uh, I it took him it took him several uh, several months to I think uh, develop this concept and uh, uh, and and make it work. I I, I think I mean uh, this just kind of speaks volumes to Wally's ability and, and ingenuity, right? Like this is just so cool. And I feel super fortunate to, <laughs> to get to have like a neighbor who is like that smart that he could be able to you know pull something like that and like actually do it. So if you want more information about the Aquaman, uh, there is a couple of ways that you could uh, reach Wally B. Uh, typically on uh, Reef to Reef, it's really easy to find him, and he's got several pages on his system and on this uh, fabulous machine. So all of that information is in the video description. Do uh, uh, check him out and check out his page. Uh, and uh, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so, uh, please consider subscribing because it really does help the channel out. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.